the future of democracy in Pakistan. For our group presentation, we will be talking about the future of democracy in Pakistan. A democracy is a system of government run by elected officials and is the cornerstone of the free world. Citizens of a democracy typically enjoy more freedom and a better quality of life as they have direct control over their governments. The people of Pakistan have shown that they want to live in a democracy, but the leaders of their country have not always made it easy. Looking back on Pakistan's democratic history can give us a good idea of how democracy may progress in the future, as well as what challenges it may face. Beginning in 1947, when Pakistan was created as a nation, its people have enjoyed four distinct democratic periods. Unfortunately, each one of these periods has been interrupted by military takeovers of the government. Democracy in Pakistan has suffered greatly, from the death of Ali Jinnah in 1948 and the assassination of Prime Minister Ali Khan in 1951, to the execution of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto in 1979, and the murder of his daughter, Benazir Bhutto, in 2007. Finally, in 2013, the Pakistan People's Party served their full five-year term, a first in the 66-year history of the nation. As we examine the past, we may hold a hope for the future of Pakistan's democracy. While democracy will continue to be the choice political system of Pakistan, it does, however, face some challenges. The first is the brave new world of globalization. In an article written by Kashmir Monitor, journalist Dukur Hussain writes about the creation of a global elite and how the creation of this top 1% has been given the power, alleging that money had always influenced politics to a degree. But with big money came big influence. The use of media is the second challenge that democracy faces. Television media has taken differing opinions and interpreted them in a way that creates good news rather than helping people to understand what a democracy is and how it should work. The third and final challenge that democracy in Pakistan faces is extremists. Hussein notes that surrounding attitudes and habits of mind that promote democratic culture are not there. Then there is the threat of extremism. Democracy, instead of defeating extremism, risks getting defeated itself by extremism. Pakistan has been married to democracy for some time now, looking to other po political systems for aid, but if they cannot overcome these already existing challenges, the future of democracy in Pakistan may not exist for much longer. Pakistan was born into democracy, but it has not always functioned well as a democracy, and a lot of the time, the power has been held by one person or a small group of people. One thing that has helped Pakistan to take a step forward is the lawyers that have been able to make their voices heard. There is a big movement in Pakistan where lawyers are taking a stance against the corruption in government. The Lawyers Movement, also known as the Movement for the Restoration of Judiciary, or the Black Coats Protest, was a popular mass protest movement initiated by the lawyers of Pakistan in response to the former president and army chief Pervez Musharraf's actions of March 9, 2007. That's when he unconstitutionally suspended Chief Justice of Pakistan's Supreme Court. The following suspension of the Chief Justice there, following the suspension of the Chief Justice, there were huge public demonstrations of lawyers protesting against what they called an assault on the independence of judiciary. Because of the lawyers' actions on the 20th of June 2007, the Chief Justice was reinstated temporarily although it was not long before the executive branch took another jab at freedom and justice. But we are shown by looking at history that the people of Pakistan can really have the power to change things in government, which is a step closer to a non-corrupt democratic government of Pakistan. Since democracy means the government is run by everyone, or everyone at least elects who will run the government, I will be talking about the elections that take place in Pakistan. Nawaz Sharif, Bilawal Bhutto Sudari, and Imran Khan will be running for Prime Minister in 2018. Sharif is currently the Prime Minister and has failed many times as a leader for Pakistan. Prime Minister is chosen by the National Assembly every five years. I think Imran Khan is the best choice as Prime Minister for this upcoming election because he has not promised anything to foreign powers. This allows him to negotiate with nations once he is Prime Minister and keep Pakistan's best interests in mind. Also, his actions show that he genuinely cares about the people of Pakistan. He built the first hospital about 20 years ago using donations. Now I'd like to elaborate on how political parties get votes. According to an article on political marketing in Pakistan, there are six different forms of appealing to the people when running in an election in Pakistan. Rational, fear, hope, victim, and appeal based on the past and appeal based on personality. 
It will be interesting to see what appeals each party uses and who becomes next Prime Minister of Pakistan. Pakistan is not a poor country, but a poorly managed country. It seems that the majority of the government leaders have a similar mentality of self before country. They have not understood the concept that they are stronger as a team. As a result, the economy has been stagnating. An example of this mentality can be seen when recently a fuel oil truck crashed on the highway. Despite the warnings of authorities, hundreds of villagers showed up with cans trying to loot the spilled fuel. One careless person lit a cigarette, and ultimately over 150 people were burned to death as they tried to get fuel for themselves. Instead of organizing the manpower and cleaning up the mess, they were focused on their own selves. That has been the political and economic mindset. Pakistan has resources. If they are going to prosper, they need to organize and adopt the mentality of working together for the greater good of the country.